Hi, my name is Jim Byrne, Principal Systems Engineer for Data Pivot Technologies, and today we're going to be talking about Commvault Live Sync. And as always, please give us a like if you uh, enjoyed this video when you're done, if you've learned a lot of good stuff. And also, uh, please uh, subscribe to our channel if you'd like to see more great content just like this. All right, today we're going to be talking about Commvault Live Sync. And by the very name you see here, it's about syncing stuff. <laughs> so with that said, let's go over here to the next slide. And I just want to go through a little table of contents. This is what we're going to cover today. I've got a demo environment set up. And what I did um, for the environment that I'm going to show protecting in Live Sync, I've seen this a couple of times at uh, customer sites. It's kind of a, a little nifty setup. So I set that up so we can uh, take a look at that. And um, I'm also going to go through uh, what Commvault Live Sync is. A lot of times, you know, you go on sites and they just show an arrow and it says, hey, you know, this, this replicates over here by some sort of magic. Um, <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to go through it. I'm going to show you actually how it works and what's going on behind the scenes. Uh, the next thing I'm going to go through here is the Commvault setup. And I'll show you how to do it because when you first go into the web GUI, you, you'll, your eyes will get drawn to the, there's a little button there that says replication and you start playing around in there trying to set it up. I'm going to show you an easy way to set up. This video is really geared for people that already have uh, VM backups running with Commvault and you just would like to take advantage of LiveSync and replicate some uh, VMs to another location. And then finally, I'll just discuss what's involved uh, in a DR event and a, a failover. Okay, let's go on to the next slide here. All right, here's, here's the uh, demo environment that I've set up main site I have here is uh, currently in Pomfret Center, Connecticut, and I have a few hypervisors set up. I've got some Oracle virtualization, some Nutanix, VMware, KVM, and got a big old media agent here. And then I've got another um, couple of ESX hosts we have set up here in North Andover, Massachusetts. And the way I had set this up, this is like my little mini case study. Um, this here is just an ESX host has uh, disk internally, there's no SAN. So this is all standalone. It's a standalone ESX host. This too is a standalone ESX host with internal storage. So this guy here, this is going to be the production server, and this one's going to be the DR server. So since we're going to be talking a lot about this, I'm going to drill in on the next slide. But one thing I did want to mention is um, the way the backups work, they actually uh, back up here, replicate here, and I make another third copy here off-site. And it's all done through a, a, a WAN you know, slash VPN tunnel. Okay, so let's dig in here a little closer on what's up here in North Andover. And this is a little environment. I've seen this a couple of times when you go to like a, a small place uh, where they just got a bunch of workstations that are RDPing into like an ERP system. So here I have uh, the production host. There's two hosts here. This one here is a standalone box. And it has a Windows VDI server just for virtual desktops. And then there's a little SQL server here. So these two machines here compose an ERP system. And in the, in the world of ransomware, uh, what people like to do is they put a little firewall in here. Because, you know, technically you could just plug this in here, but then you've got everything exposed. So what you can do is you have, a, you know, it might be several machines back here. This one's simple, but there could be more and you put them behind a firewall and you just open up the ports you need to get in here so you can do your work. And then you've got a bunch of users over here and they're just doing RDP sessions through the firewall port on 3389 and they're, they're doing their work. Now down below here is a Commvault server and what this is doing is it's connecting through a network block device uh, so it doesn't have to be connected to these in any way. It's just going to connect to the management port on the ESX server internally. So what it does each night is it snaps these VMs and backs them up. And that's all done internally on the host. And there is a SQL agent installed on the SQL server. So when Commvault does a snap, it can basically quiesce the database, quiesce the Windows file system, perform the snapshot, back it up. Then once we've got our, our backup done, we're going to go through the firewall across the internal network, and then we're going to come in here on port 8403 for Commvault, and then we're going to go here to the media agent. So the, the sequence of events is snap it, back it up, replicate it. 
Now, I have a copy right here. And what Live Sync does is it's leveraging Commvault's uh, deep deduplication and the ability to use change block tracking to replicate between these hosts very efficiently. So what happens each night, so before we do Live Sync, what you might have is your VMs here, you're backing them up and you're replicating here. So when you turn on Live Sync, it's just a small little step, but when you do that, I can now restore these each night and I can do it in an orchestrated fashion so that it's very easy to uh, identify the VMs that are the, the DR copies and you can fail over with Commvault. So you can have like a planned failover. So the way this is set up, if I lose this host here, I just come over here, fire these up. I've already got my firewall. And some of you uh, people with a sharp eye probably notice that these addresses are the same. Remember, in production, this is running all the time these guys over here are off the only time they're going to come on is when there's a dr so when i turn these on these machines over here for their rdp sessions just log right back into 10 1 10 20 and they go on a port 3389 and they're back in business and the replication is run each night and the you know business owners are fine with that if they you know, it, worst case scenario, if they lose a day's worth of work, it's a small business. They just punch the orders back in again. Not, not a big deal. All right. So now let's take a look at what does this look like in an actual ESX environment? Well, here you go. <laughs> so this is the production server right now. This is uh, New England Node 2. And here's the VDI server. This is the uh, SQL server, and this is the firewall. So that would correspond to what you see over here. That's the desk, SQL, production firewall. And then under operations, this is the media agent. This is actually an admin workstation. And this is the firewall. So these guys here, that's this. There's the firewall. There's the media agent. And then there's a duplicate right over here. Now this is where Live Sync comes in. It gives you a nice, elegant way, you know, to keep everything managed so you know exactly what's going on. And when you do the replication, you can put a suffix in here so that you know that that's the DR machine, that's the DR machine, and that's my DR firewall. So that would correspond to these guys over here. So this is the DR. Uh, VDI machine, this is the DR SQL server, and this is the DR firewall. And then last but not least here is the operations side. There's my media agent, there's my firewall, and that would correspond to this over here. There's my media agent, and there's my firewall. So it's a fairly simple little setup. And now we're going to jump into Commvault, so now that you kind of have an idea what's going on here. Let's hop over here to Combo, and here I have the main dashboard. It's the virtualization dashboard, and here's some of the largest hypervisors I have, and this is the um, VMware, vCenter. And one of the things um, that kind of messed me up when I was first learning how to do this, see where it says disaster recovery? I felt like I, you know, I just should go in here and do everything here first. Um, Actually, when you go to set up your replication, do it over here. You can actually do it from the sub-client. So when you click on this, here it says configure replication. You can do it from here. But before you do that, um, let's go here to our disaster recovery. You need to create a replication target. Now, what a replication target does is it gives you an elegant way to put everything in, in a particular spot in a particular way. It orchestrates everything for you to keep it, um, you know, just kind of in a nice fashion so you know what's going on, to keeps it from getting confusing. So here's my NEN1DR. And the way this is set up, let me click Edit, and it'll bring it over here. So I gave it, here's my recovery target name. This is the hypervisor I'm going to go to. This is my access node, NEN1. Let me just pop over here real quick to my diagram. That's this guy here. That's where I'm going to be going. And then uh, 
user group, I just did admin. Uh, a lot of times, places I go, they'll have groups. But uh, in my case, it's just a lab, so I have to set up as admin. Now, the, the display name, this is what I really like, because you can keep all your names the same. Just put a suffix on them, or you can do a prefix, whatever suits your needs. So anything that goes over to the DR site, same name, just has dash DR after it. And then the destination host is NEN1. That's my DR machine. And I just picked this particular data store, uh, HDD1. And the resource pool is um, going to be the production. And then down here, this is the network I'm going to connect on. Remember my diagram? So when I get everything over here, I wanted it to plug in on this network that I have on this DR host, 192.168.1. So I'm going to plug in right there. So when I restore this here, plug it in there so it's ready to go. Okay, so let me cancel this. So this is all set up. Now let's go over to go back. Okay, so now I'm back at my hypervisors. And I'm going to scroll down to my subclient. Now just for fun, what I'll do is I'm going to create one just so you can see how easy this is. So I'm going to right click here. I'm not right click, I'm sorry. You just regular click, go to configure replication. Let's call this uh, demo uh, one one. <laughs> All right. Now the VM group that I'm working with is this. Now you don't have to pick everything in, in the um, VM group. You can pick a few or just pick one. And in my case, I'm, I'm just going to um, oh, I'll just pick this. This is the workstation. So I'm going to pick that. And then I'm going to say next. And then we're going to pick our recovery target. And I just showed you this. So we're going to say put it over here. And it already knows what access node to use because it's sitting right over there. And then down here, I can pick out how I want to um, provision the disk. I always just say original. Do it the way it was on um, the other side. Also here for the transport mode, just leave it at auto convolt. We'll figure it out. Now where it says select copy, if you look here, this is um, a storage plan. So there, there's several copies. Remember when I was talking about here, how when you do your backups, I back up here, replicate here, and then I go off-site. So Convolt has a nice way to keep track of all the targets. So what I call this one is I call this one NEN1 off-site. So when I go to do my restore, I'm going to pick this one. Now, the reason why is uh, it's just common sense. If I'm going to be restoring over here, I don't want to be pulling from my copy here, and I don't want to be pulling across the WAN. I want to pull the one right here that's local. So that's why it's nice. I can pick the one that's most efficient. So what happens is each night, back up, replicate, and then the live sync kicks off. And it starts doing the, the uh, recovery. So here we are. I've got that all set up. Let me go next. And it says, do you want to override any options for specific VMs? No. Leave it all the way it is. Say no. And then this shows you what's going to happen in your live sync. So you have um, vCenter and um, the backups that are from vCenter are going to use Frel1. The recovery target is going to be NENDR1. And we're going to use VMware. So here's the source VM, here's the destination VM, and this is the host. So it kind of maps everything out for you real nice. So I'm not going to save this because I don't want a, a, a replication to happen right now here in the middle of my video. So with that saying, let's go over here and we are going to take a look at the replication monitor. And or actually, let me go to replication. So I didn't save that. So here's my actual replication right here. This is what it looks like. So this one I've, I've had running for a while. So I just will show you what this looks like. So once you set this up and it's run a few times, it shows you uh, the vCenter that you're using, the recovery target name. And here's my VMs down here. And my SLA is just basically, I want to make sure I get a copy within one day. And this just ran a little while ago. So it's within one hour and 41 minutes. My SLA is met. I'm in good shape. And this is a, just a summary down here. So you, at a glance, you can see what's going on. You can see that NEN desk maps to NEN desk dr 
NEN SQL maps to NEN SQL DR, and PF Sense PRD maps to PF Sense DR, PRD dash DR. That's a tongue twister. Okay, so, and then up here, these are all my options. And the replication window, I just went Monday to Sunday, so every day of the week, all day. Transport mode I was, I'm using is hot add. So that's, that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, and if you go here to replication monitor, if you're in a, a fairly large site, you might want to just, you know, leave this up and running, say in your uh, operations center. So you can just leave it on a screen <clears throat> and then at a moment's notice, you can see where you're at <clears throat> with your, with your replications. This is particularly handy. Um, if you're like, if you have a 24 hour knock and they just want to watch the replications run overnight. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it for LiveSync. I, you know, I think that's pretty much all I have to go over for that. <clears throat> and oh, one thing I do want to mention is Commvault does uh, take advantage of ch uh, change block tracking. So this whole process is pretty quick. The, you know, granted, the first time you do this, when all the data is new, it does take a little while to move stuff around. But on the second backup and beyond, it's basically incremental forever. You're going to leverage change block tracking as part of VMware. So you'll whatever the size is in, it's only going to be like 1% of the data will get backed up here. Then you replicate it here, and then you restore. So end to end, the whole thing in a typical night might take 20 minutes. That's, it doesn't take very long at all. It's quick. So it's back it up. Got my copy here. Replicate. Restore. Very easy. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk about, let me go up here to my table of contents, is a DR event failover. You know, what can you do? So inside of Commvault, there's two ways you can do this. If this thing just goes down, there's a button you can click to say, just fail over the way it is, and we're done. But let's say you a um, few years go by, and you're like, you know what? This is getting old. I'm going to replace this hardware. Why don't we fail over to this guy and I'm going to take this down, throw it away, and I'm going to put a new machine in here. And that's easy enough to do. That's called a planned failover. And when you do a planned failover, Commvault Smart, it will know that this is still up. So it will go in here, shut these machines down, back them up, replicate it, restore, and then bring these online. And then your users will be running over here. And if you, <clears throat> if you look over here under the um, replication area, and let's go here. <clears throat> Under You're going to set up what they call a failover group. And I haven't set any up here, but what you do, it's a one-click replication to, um, to failover. And it is quite handy. So you can do it so that it's done planned. Uh, like, for example, so I, I've seen people do it uh, between sites, for example. Let me go back. Let's say uh, instead of Andover, Mass, this was down in Florida and there was a hurricane coming in. You can actually do a failed plan over. You can move all your VMs over here to Connecticut. And then when the hurricane passes, you click the button again and you can do a planned fail back. Piece of cake. Or if the, the machines down here in Florida got flooded out and they're just gone, you could just basically click... DR and it'll bring them up over here and you'll be running. So that's pretty much it uh, for Commvault LiveSync. Very, fairly simple. And if you have any questions, you know, feel free to reach out to us at uh, commvault.datapivottech.com. And again, if you've liked the video, uh, please give us a thumbs up. That really helps us out. And please subscribe to our channel so every time I put a video out like this, you can uh, get notified and, and, and enjoy it. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Bye.